Hi everyone, and thank you for coming, even though you had to be here. My name is Kaylee Zolke, and I'm going to be talking about some Native American mythology, more specifically the Hopi tribe in the southwestern United States. So to give some quick background, these people were infamous for worshipping extraterrestrial beings, usually of animal form, which they believed would one day return to Earth. In the Hopi's case, ants, and more specifically ant people, were the target of this praise and would eventually become their saviors on multiple accounts. They held the same significance for these individuals as cattle or other livestock did for various other cultures we've covered. So, first and foremost, to set the scene, I need you all to imagine a world, the first world. A thriving civilization, life is good. Now imagine that world being completely and totally obliterated by fire. Everything's burning, children are screaming, it's not great. But wait, a second world is born. Now destroy it with ice. This became the harsh reality of the Hopi people, living through not one, but two back-to-back -back cataclysmic events. While it cannot be completely confirmed, it is theorized that the fires were causation of some sort of volcanic eruption, meteor strike, or coronal mass ejection from the sun. Regardless of the exact cause, things were nothing short of spicy. As far as the Ice Age, in a sense, that took place, it is thought to be brought upon by glaciers or a sudden shifting of the poles. Anyway, back to the story. At this point, you're probably thinking there's not much hope left for these people, but then one day, a strangely shaped cloud formed in the sky, and naturally, the Hopi began to follow it. They trailed this cloud for days on end, using a moving star for guidance at night. Eventually, they were led to the sky god Sutanang. He presented them to the ant people, who abruptly took them to a series of underground, subterranean cave structures which provided a place of both refuge and sustenance for the Hopi, safe and sound from the catastrophes unfolding on the surface. This served as home for the ant people, who began sharing much of their knowledge with the tribe at this time, even showing them how to ration, store, and grow crops. Because the Hopi came from such a harsh desert landscape with little precipitation, they needed to master the art of growing food with basically no water. Crops such as corn, beans, and squash became staples of their diet as they slowly but surely learned the ways of, this, of these strange beings. Fun fact, theories state that this is why ants have such thin waists today, because of their generosity toward the tribe and sacrificing of their own food sources. So, after receiving the teachings presented by the ant people, the Hopi were able to make their eventual return to the surface after conditions had stabilized. They created the dwelling seen today, which, from a bird's eye point of view, can actually resemble ant colonies. Still today, the Hopi people credit much of their success as a tribe to these ant creatures. Without their shelter and guidance, who knows where the Hopi tribe would have ended up, possibly meeting their match with the forces of Mother Nature.